I remember my agent calling me and said, uh, he says, he says, hey, I got this show, this this guy that you worked with a long time ago, Michael Jacobs. Oh. And uh, and he said, uh, he really wants you in this role. And I said, well, what kind of role is it? You know, he says, well, you know, it's the play of this father on a show, and there's another father. And, and I said, whoa, 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 I don't want to play a father on a show. So I turned it down, right? So then the agent calls me up and says, he says, um, you got to go in. You got just just meet Michael. Just just sit down and meet him. You know. So I go in that afternoon, and I meet Michael, who's great. You know Michael's energy. You know, and he says, "Great, you, you got to do this." Great. I, you, I said, well, "When?" He says, "Today." I said, "Today." He says, "Yeah, we get three thirty. I said, "All right." So, so we go over and uh, do the reading, and everybody says, "Okay." And I go back home. I said, "Okay, well, this is probably not really going to happen like this," and then. That's the way it happened for me. <laughs> so I was in. You know, I was like, all of a sudden, I'm a father on a TV show raising a young girl who's 11 years old. Well, this is home. <laughs> this is where you get to grow up. <laughs> oh, my God. That pilot season, it was down to three pilots. And, you know, when you are going to go to network, you can, only, you can only go to network for one. You have to choose. And one of them was already picked up, actually, for 13, but we chose my two dads over that one. My mom and my sister and I, we sat down and we read the three scripts, and we decided to choose my two dads over the one that was picked up because we thought it was just better. We thought it was the best script. It turned out to be, yeah, yeah it turned out to be the best, because yeah. the other one, it was on, but it was canceled after the first season. Right. Anyway, so yeah, so then I did the pilot, but then the network didn't want me. I mean, when we were doing yeah, the after, whole... You didn't know this? No. What? Well, wait a minute. Well, well after, backtrack. Well, okay, so this is after they, we, they shoot, we shoot the pilot. Oh, okay. The show gets picked up, and now they go, okay, we're going to pick up the show, but we need to recast that kid. Oh. So then... After this, we did the pilot? Yeah. Because the, so network, didn't the network no. didn't want me, but Michael did. And, you know, Michael Jacobs is, you know, you don't want to mess with him. They should have known that. <laughs> they should have known they weren't going to win because he, he was set on me, but they, yeah, they wanted somebody else. So oh, okay. they saw all these hundreds of people, and Michael just wouldn't back down. And they finally, you know, just fine. They finally just went with me. and See, so they made the right choice. Yeah. Oh, this is what I do, huh? I made this. I mean, everything you see here, okay, everything hanging up, Everything on the floor, I mean. Oh, you're an artist. You're poor. You have to live here. <laughs> this is not some puppy that you take home because it looks at you through a store window with a sad-eyed puppy face. <laughs> Don't do that. Paulie. I love Paulie. And we had a great rapport on the show. And we, you know, he always had the respect to let me try whatever I wanted, and I always had the respect to let him try. So I think that's the first thing that you have to have in working with anybody is you've got to be able, it has to be that kind of relationship where you're willing to try things. All right, 21 game, got to win by two, and you can't use the furniture as a pick. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not ready. Okay, I'm ready. We did a few scenes where, uh, where we didn't really know what was going to happen. And, you know, we follow the script, but then when we get to something that was, that caught us both off guard, we would roll with it. That's what it's about right there. You know, because, you, know, you know, we can all plan whatever we want to plan, but it's the things that you don't plan that are the most interesting. Yeah, I loved Paul. I, I totally, I just idolized him. I just thought he was so funny. Oh, you know, and hilarious. so I just, I loved him. I, and I think I, I really wanted to sort of have an adopted dad because I didn't really have a dad at that point. And Greg was kind of already taken. Because no, he was... had three kids, including a baby. And I was just like, all right, well, forget it. This guy's kind of taken already. And, and Paul, meanwhile, wasn't, you know, because he was just actually on the brink of getting married. He didn't have any kids. So I was like, all right, well, Greg can't adopt yeah, but, me, but, but, wait, but wait, Paul can't. Come on, you look more like me than Paul. Than Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I love that call too, though. I mean, casting-wise, so, it really could go either way. So, so you're saying somewhere in the middle? Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Paul would take me to movies sometimes, or just that that kind of stuff, especially in the beginning. Paul used to take you to movies. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because I think um, I think Michael was Michael Jacobs, the producer. I think was worried about Paul and I having a believable parent-child relationship because Paul didn't have kids and I don't think he was worried about that with you. I would have you... taken you to movies. Well, I know I know you would have, but I think you, you sort of had that natural paternal thing already. Yeah. And I think Michael was worried that Paul 
didn't really know what that relationship was like because I don't think he had any young people in his life, nieces or nephews or kids or anything like that. Any woman I love has to love you too. We're set. Hi, Judge. Hi, sweetie. This is the child. This is the child's smile. <laughs> if she ever answers the door without it, call me. The thing about Florence was that if she loved you, which she did on the set, she was your fan, she stuck by you, she she kill for you. And, uh, and I felt the same about her. She always used to feel bad for me when I was crying on, on, on the show. So she would always say, it's good for your sinuses. <laughs> or it's, it's good for your something. I don't know. She would try to, you know, yeah. make me feel better. Yeah. I loved when she was around. I loved her performance herself. I mean, she really knew how to deliver a line. She could deliver a line and just kill you at, at the slowest pace. And then, boom, she knew where the laugh was. She always got the laugh, you know. <laughs> Morning, honey. You know what's great about you, Klawicki? You played professional football, you run a diner that's open all night, and still you find time to know nothing about kids. I try to keep busy. Dick, yeah, but he yeah, is he... like a big bear. He walks yeah. so, you know, he did, you know, you could tell that all those years of football Oh you know, yeah, had impacted his body, and he always wore Birkenstocks to sort of, you know, for his feet. And but I really liked him. He's just very shy and very quiet, you know, which is a great contrast to the look of him because he's so you know big and imposing and has such a presence. But um, he's very funny. Even though with the limited amount that he had, because he you know he's he was stuck in Kluwikis, so he really didn't. He was behind that bar, so he had to come up with things that. Uh, that suit the bar and try to get as many laughs as you can. You bring it to the kid. She looks at it. She smiles. You tell her it's from me. She knows she's loved. Gotcha. Here you go, kid. Enjoy. <laughs> That's so sweet. You made this for me, Mr. Kwicky? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really know about his whole football career. I mean, I knew about it, but I didn't really know the substance of it until I got to, to see people. that footage, and I could not, I could <laughs> not believe it. <laughs> I couldn't believe that this, because I knew him as this, like, gentle, yeah. shy, quiet, you know, person, and then just seeing, <laughs> seeing him just completely oh, yeah. obliterate these people in just extremely violent fashion. But it actually... I, I was like, I think I like football now. I mean, if this is what yeah. it's like, then I, I'm into it. Ah, nice pass. <laughs> Listen, you know, I'm sorry I'm late. You know, traffic was murder. Bonnie uh, Ravisi. Bon Giovanni Ravisi. Giovanni Ravisi, who did really <laughs> he well. He always had a guitar. He walked around with a guitar. So you remember that, because you were 11. Glued, it was right? glued to <laughs> him. Yeah. <laughs> So we always was playing the guitar, and yeah. you know we'd be sitting with our teacher in the schoolroom, and she'd be like, "Okay, Bonnie, are you gonna, you know, do some math? Are you gonna write <laughs> I'm something? I'm doing math. You are you gonna read something?" And, and he literally <laughs> would not put the guitar. I mean, he would be sitting there reading, playing the guitar. He'd be walking down the hall playing the guitar. Really? Yeah. See, now, I, mean, I don't remember that. They would have to kind of like physically extract it from him for him to re rehearse the scene. That's hilarious. Yeah. So I figure he must be a great guitar player now. He must I know be. I haven't talked to him in years, but. I don't know, did you hang out with any of those guys on the off time? Not so much. I mean, we would see each other at parties and stuff also. You were kind like of you're saying, it, No, come <laughs> on. And Amy Hathaway. But, you know, we were, Amy, we right. were at work so much. I think we, I don't think we needed to hang. I, there yeah, wasn't we much time day, outside right. of, like, when were we going to hang out at 4 o'clock in the morning? We were together That's true. all day and night, every day, you know. Yeah, it was a long all process, those. you know. It was, uh, that, that was our life, really. Our life is being, yeah. when you're doing a show like that, you know, that becomes your life. So you Yeah, know, and you're, you're tight. I mean, you can't help but be tight. I mean, I guess right. it's like any job when you're working those kind of hours with people every day. And hopefully you are tight something. because if you're not tight, it's a miserable well, situation. Well, yeah, and it wasn't you know, so, an and easy it was, show. Yeah. Some shows are just kind of happy-go-lucky and they yeah. just sort of spring into the world and this show wasn't like that every every she wasn't like that huh? no see you had a whole different thing with you me. didn't were you were you there <laughs> yeah Greg? but i but it was i was there but, but see, even the stuff you're talking about like reworking it all the time but that's i mean fun. all shows rewrite i mean that's standard right. but but this was 
I mean, this was crazy rewrites. I mean, working subsequent to that, I, I don't think I've seen really? that okay. level. See, I thought that's the way it was. 12 rewrites, was. 13 rewrites, yeah. you know, where they're running out of colors for the pages, you know. Oh, yeah, Every right. rewrite Golden is on a, a new shade of, okay. of there's Super no more run. colors left in the rainbow right. for the rewrite yeah, that we're right. on now. And See, I thought that's the way it is with situation comedies because, you know. I don't know. I think you guys kind of had a hard time. I was not, to, I never took it to heart that it was anything, you know, that, Personal. I mean, I always looked at it, that, how are we going to do comedy and have fun mm -hmm. and do this if we can't have fun? Not all art is a bowl of fruit. Look at this, come on. Before awareness. That's brilliant. That is truly brilliant. You're saying that Nicole's blank piece of paper is brilliant? Yes, yes he is. Tell him why. Go, Dad. I guess see, working with the same actors over and over again, I started to, because I didn't have any technique. I was just a kid kind of walking around, talking, saying lines. Right. And then, I, you know, you guys, you know, you were real actors. You had technique. And, you know, I mean, Paul is a comedian, and I think, you know, I didn't get to see how he worked as much. But with you, you know, you were a real actor, and I would always watch the things that you would do. Like, you wouldn't eat dinner. You know, Greg would always have a little fruit thing. He would have, like, watermelon for dinner because <laughs> he would say, like, right. I don't want to get, you know, he's got all this energy. Like, I don't want to get bogged down. You know, I, I can't have all this blood, you know, going to my gut. I got to be, I got to be light. I got to be, you know, I got to be fast on my feet. I got to just have, you know, water. I'm making you sound like Mr. T, but, you know, just, I, just have some watermelon. And, you know, and just, I don't know, just even little stuff like that. So then I started, that was, I think, the first time I really saw, you know, you know witnessed the technique of acting or how real adult how actors food, How important food work. and acting. <laughs> <laughs> really, the balance between, you know. Well, that's just one example, but I'm saying no, just. I, how but I you love work, that because, you know, you that's know? a big thing because I, I always remember that. It's like if a, a runner wouldn't go and eat a giant meal before they go run a race. You know, an actor wouldn't, you know, shouldn't go out and eat a full gourmet meal and then go try to, you know, have the same kind of energy because it's, it's a, actually a physical thing that happens to you. That was a very big thing with me, honestly. It yeah. was. I mean, because we always had food around, right? I mean, there's, yeah, food, yeah, there's everywhere. food everywhere. You can just mm -hmm. eat all day long. You know, yeah. you can gain 30 pounds on a set. Oh, easy. easily. Yeah, but you yeah. always had you always had total energy, commitment. You know, you never gave up on it or got frustrated or yeah. decided to phone it in. You know, that's that's a good nice. thing to see when you're that age. Nice days. You know, to see. Yeah. See that. You know. I'm glad I was a good father figure for you. You really <laughs> were. You really truly were. I don't think you know how much. Okay. Now, the only thing between you is the armrest. Now, this is where the battle is won or lost. <laughs> now, he can't go under it, he can't go through it. He's got to come at you airborne. <laughs> Hence the term, shooting him down. It was still a time when, you know, 30 million people right. would regularly watch a, a sitcom. Right. So, 30, I think we used to get a 28 to 30 share a week now. Yeah. I mean, if you get that now, it's insane. Anywhere we went, anywhere I went, you know, you know, I would get recognized from either that or that trucking guy with the chimpanzee. How about you? <laughs> Outside of Los Angeles, like, people are more likely to say something. In LA, people don't care and... Yeah, they don't say as much. But, they're, you know, yeah, but if you went, you know, anywhere else in the country, you know, we would go back east where we're from. We would go down the shore in Jersey, for example, and, you know, Greg's from oh, Jersey. Oh, yeah, I'm from yeah. Jersey, too, right? So, you know, and if, if there was shore. a lot of kids, you know, if you went to Magic Mountain or something, a place where a lot of kids were, they would always... Yeah. You know, come and come and say hi. And my mom thought, this is so great. And you know, these people want to say hi to you. And I mean, all yeah, all that the was pictures in the pen ready. Right? Like, totally. <laughs> but yeah. I was just like, oh, oh yeah. God, I don't well, know. Were, I don't were, know what to do. I mean, you were 11, 12, 13. Okay. Yeah. How would you know what to do? I don't know. I mean, how would and anybody that's that age know how to handle that? I that's did what not I was talking know about before. It's like, you know, I don't know how anybody who's that age can handle that kind of success. It's it's. Crazy. It's weird. You know, it's it's definitely weird. weird. You know, you're just yeah. not not used to it, and then I don't know. You're, you know, you need to be gracious and appreciative. You know, these people are the reason why you have a job, and yet I, you know, you don't know what to say. Yeah. It's a weird situation. But they were and there. It still is actually. They're there. Yeah. You know, if you meet, you know. Right, because you look exactly so. the same. So when you still walk down the street, <laughs> they gotta say, you know. I always think that's weird when people recognize me. From, I'm like, God, that was so long ago. How can you? I don't know. I don't know how they make the connection, but... Yeah, because you look exactly no, the same. No, you truly oh, look exactly no, no, the same. You. No, you, you really look exactly the same. <laughs> I love it. I love being a father. Yeah, I love being a father, too. Mm. Mm. Mm.
every morning. To me, honestly, it was one. It was it was one of the best times I ever had working in my life. I know you don't feel that way sometimes because it was a little more pressure. I did, yeah. I, I was pretty stressed out at the time, but um, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. We came to work every day and we figured out how to make people laugh harder and harder and harder. By Tuesday, hopefully the hardest they left. And the family situation that we had with you, working with you and Paul and, and Michael and Bob Meyer and all those guys, uh, I had a, the best time, one of the best times I've ever had working on the show. And you know, see now, I wore this jacket because this is one of the original Joey Harris jackets. It just happened to be in my closet. Just <laughs> and, uh, happened to be. Just happened to be, so I thought this morning you know, I'd, I'd wear it. But Greg <laughs> is not wearing his bicycle shorts today, which he used to wear to the set all the time, his bicycle shorts. Oh, my bicycle shorts, and my fanny pack, oh uh, well, my God. No, but the bicycle shorts, <laughs> the high tops. That's right. With socks and a t-shirt. That's right, the high tops. That yeah, was uh, like your uniform. Well, you look great, man. That's all I can say. <laughs> you grew up nice. Thanks, Craig.